I see it this way, lots of potential upside with artificial intelligence, but also, at least for right now, some downside. The downside could grow in the future if we do not take this seriously and carefully, but it's my belief that within the next three years, we're gonna be able to take advantage of amazing breakthroughs that happen solely because of artificial intelligence. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. We're here today with a brand new Total Wellness Tuesday episode on the Cabral Concept dedicated to the topic of artificial intelligence. There are so many people out there, many people that I've been in contact with that are worried about the coming of AI, machine-based learning, and whether it's going to replace all of medicine, conventional medicine and natural health, uh, as well as what it will do for basically the sharing of information, data, should we be worried? Now, is it gonna take over the human race or not, right? So I'm gonna give you my perspective on how it can and will and is already being used in medicine and natural health. I'm gonna give you five pros here today as well as five cons to be on the watch for. Now, it is my opinion that if we are able to move at a slower rate, a normal rate, begin to work in conjunction with artificial intelligence, it can actually do miraculous things for all of us as humans. But the thing is, we have to be careful with it. We have to be somewhat cautious as to not move too quick, too fast, and make mistakes that we may not be able to come back from. So if you're unfamiliar with artificial intelligence, a baseline of what I'd like to share with you about is that it is essentially a machine-based learning uh, and not an algorithm, so that would be different. So an algorithm would be something that humans create in order to be able to take data and be able to essentially calculate things, figure things out. It's gonna aggregate, which just means pull together a bunch of data and it's used in an algorithm and that algorithm then is going to give you an answer or at least metrics uh, and then you might be able to make a decision on that. But it's all human-based. It's kind of like a formula that, you, that humans have created. So we've had that for many, many years. But artificial intelligence, and if you're looking at things like chat GPT-4 and many of the others, and there will, of course, be a five, and I'm sure when you listen to this, maybe in the future, there's six and there's multiple variations. But what it is, is it's actually creating inside of a computer, although it's not, I'm just using this for baseline kind of knowledge, inside a digital-based world, where you are actually creating its own mind. So a mind that is able to think for itself. Now, for right now, it has not reached the stage of what is called AGI, artificial general intelligence. The AI that we have right now is able to glean information that it's been fed and then is able to give you answers based on that information. In the future, artificial general intelligence will have been able to really download, view all the information that's out there in the internet, and it will then be able to think for itself. Now at varying levels, but it will have all of this information. And in the beginning stages, it is always being programmed by humans as to not necessarily what to think, although that is tried in the beginning, but we've also seen now variations of where uh, AI has started to maybe think for itself a little bit. But what we're doing right now is giving it the information and based on that, it is coming up with decisions. It's coming up with answers for us. So that is just a base of what artificial intelligence is. And now how is it going to be used in natural health and medicine? So let's just call it the natural health field or the conventional medicine field as well. So I have five pros and then I have five cons. I wanna give you the positive and the negative and then pull it all together here on the show. So the first one is this, and these are positives. Doctors right now, you may not know this, but your typical primary care physician is seeing anywhere between like 16 and 30 people a day, right? So they're all 15 minute, 30 minute, or hour long appointments. And most people don't get an hour long appointment unless it's for their wellness visit, and that's in air quotes, yes, um, where they get once a year. So most of them are 15 minute to 30 minute appointments. They're quick check-ins. It's, hey, how are you doing? Okay, this is the issue you're suffering from. Here, maybe they got new blood work in. Here's what your blood work says. Here are the pharmacological 
uh, methods, so pharmace pharmaceuticals that we're going to prescribe. That's for the most part conventional medicine. I'm not saying anything's wrong with that. The majority of the population, that is exactly what they want. I am not one to say that you shouldn't be able to get that. You should get that. Now, if you want to go deeper, of course, we talk about that all the time. Uh, that is when you get to look at the underlying root causes. Conventional medicine does not look at underlying root causes for the most part. They look at the uh, symptoms, the diagnosed blood work disease state, and then they prescribe a pharmaceutical, and there's really never any hope of coming off that pharmaceutical for a chronic-based condition, which is why it's more masking the symptoms and palliating symptomatology than it is actually, I don't know, in my opinion, practicing medicine. I, I think it's practicing pharmacology. But again, that's just my opinion, and many doctors have a different opinion, and that's okay, because the patient ultimately gets to choose. So. Here's the thing, no matter what though, um, this doesn't usually happen in the natural health field, but it does in the health insurance field of conventional medicine, you're seeing 20, 30 people a day. And you get fatigue. I mean, that's the thing is like, if you're at the end of the day of the doctor, the doctor has done a lot of work. He's seen a lot of people, worked on a lot of hard cases, got to keep everything straight. So the nice thing is that by a doctor plugging in the information to a system that's already there with his notes or her notes, and then we are uh, getting the information also from the AI, the artificial intelligence, as to what the AI would do. And then the physician would then be able to have a standardized treatment based on what the AI says to do, but it should also, of course, match up with she or he would do as well as a physician. So the nice thing is, like, no matter how tired the doctor is, um, they're going to be able to hopefully have a standardized plan of care that they can use for all patients. The second is this, no more overlooking lab errors. So there are so many doctors, their patients come in and they have a higher low in blood work and they don't know exactly what to do for it. Meaning like there is no specific medicine that they may put them on for, let's say liver enzymes or ALT, AST that might be elevated. They might not know exactly what to do if their bun or creatinine levels are elevated. They don't necessarily say, well, I'm not gonna put this person on dialysis. I'm not gonna put this person on this type of medication because it's not that severe. So they don't have anything that they can do. And so they may just overlook those numbers and not get back to their patients. Well, with a standardized uh, artificial intelligence program as to best practices based on those lab values, high or low, they're gonna be able to give better treatments for their patients. The third one is this, no mistakes when it comes to pharmacological interventions, meaning like no more mistakes when it comes to prescribing the right medication for the right person based also on all the other medications they're taking. It can be very difficult for a medical doctor to keep in their mind all of the different interactions between medications. Okay, this person's on a blood thinner, they can't be doing this, this person's on a MO inhibitor, they can't be doing that. And so now, if you go to enter in a uh, medication or a symptom, artificial intelligence will give you the answers and then it will give you the answers based on the other pharmaceuticals that a patient is taking. Now, some of this already exists, which is amazing and that's fantastic, but it's just gonna get that much better. So th these things are helpful. I mean, again, third leading cause of death is pharma, uh, pharmaceuticals and conventional medicine. So that would be fantastic. We drastically reduce that and then hopefully, you know, eliminate it to almost zero one day. Number four is it will help older doctors, and I don't mean old, not, not saying that at all, not to miss new breakthroughs. So older means this, you've been out of medical school for 15, 20 years, and you are not a doctor that keeps up with the different breakthroughs in medical science. And again, like I'm not trying to call anybody out because your doctor is probably phenomenal, is that it's the majority of doctors. Like they're, they're still treating patients the way they learned 20 years ago in their residency or their internships or whatever it might be. So it's, it will be great to see that when they go to put together a typical uh, treatment plan, that the treatment plan is also updated based on the safest, latest, and greatest breakthroughs. And some of the other things like, again, every, every doctor used to just give antibiotics when they first came out, even for viruses as you know, prophylactic means to prevent a infection in the future. Or they would give them to dermatologists for uh, acne. And so really important that this will help people that have not been doing their upkeep 
20, 30, 40 years. I mean, a doctor can be practicing 50 years, 50 years into practice. So really important that we look at that as well. And the fifth pro is it will create massive breakthroughs after reading hundreds of millions of patient labs and then aggregating all of that data in looking for commonalities amongst patients and potentially any surveys that patients have filled out as well. So what does all that mean? Because I think that this is really what we should be looking forward to. So you, uh, let's just say artificial intelligence is fed 100 million labs. And all those 100 million labs are from people, let's just say, uh, 55 years, 60 years and older. And then they can say, okay, show me all the people with autoimmune diseases, and then it will pull all the people with a high RA factor or Hashimoto's or whatever it might be, SED rate, et cetera. And then it will say, okay, now show me all the people, and it will start to look at commonalities. So we're still using humans to ask the questions, but no human would be able to read 100 million labs. It's just not possible. I mean, my team and I, we've read some of the like most and largest amount of labs in the entire world out of any practice, and we're not looking for any gold stars. It's just what we do and what we love to do. It's, it's how we practice. And it's just not blood work, of course. It's, you know, it's many different labs. So hundreds and hundreds of thousands of labs. But you know, even at that point, you have to keep all of that in your head at the same time. Like that's not possible, right? So uh, this will be one of the biggest breakthroughs, if not the biggest breakthrough, breakthrough in artificial intelligence. And it's going to lead to new discoveries, especially if we're able to combine blood work with at-home lab testing like gut function, hormone function, omega-6s and 3s, heavy metals, et cetera. So I look forward to that date. And by the way, when I was mentioning like physicians and all that, you can just substitute natural health practitioners. But natural health practitioners, they just don't prescribe pharmaceuticals. They're not seeing 20 to 30 people a day. They're seeing like four to eight. Um, you know, and but yes, the same thing. Natural health practitioners may be practicing 30, 40, 50 years as well and may not be keeping up with the new research as well. So it will certainly help them. So those are the pros, and there's a lot. I mean, that's all those are some phenomenal things that we won't be able to do without artificial intelligence. So pretty, pretty amazing. And machine learning, which is basically just again feeding the machine the data, having it learn. And and it's like you know, playing chess now. Like there's no human that can really beat a computer. Um, or like the highest AI in chess. All right, so the cons are this. The first one is this. Doctors and health practitioners, natural health practitioners, may get lazy and not rely on their own critical thinking and only on AI. Why does this matter? Well, the problem is this. At least for probably the next three to five years, artificial intelligence is only going to be as good as the questions you ask it Right? The prompts that you give it, meaning like how you ask the question, and then also your ability to be able to look at the data that AI gave you and say, is this applicable to my client or patient? You're still going to need to do that. You can't just say, I'm just going to listen to what the computer says. That's a dangerous spot to get into. The second con is, in the beginning, some of the diagnostics and recommendations will be wrong. Flat out, they will be wrong. And they're wrong right now. Not all of them, of course, the minority, but they're wrong on ChatGPT as well. They're just not correct. Meaning like when you ask for an outcome, they give you one specific outcome, not all of the different possibilities. Like I prompted it for different things. And then I said, okay, well, what about this? And they said, my mistake. They actually said that it could be this, this, and this. So it's very interesting, but we have to be careful that we do not rely completely on AI-based diagnostics, especially for the next three to five years. AI is only as good as what it is able to read and research, and research bias may play into its recommendations. This is extremely important. So for right now, if you only allow a computer system or AI to read a specific type of medical book or like you feed it podcasts or you feed it whatever, it's going to be biased as to whatever that book, podcast, or article said. It's not going to distinguish what it believes to be right or wrong or good or bad. And so we have to be careful to understand right now that ChatGPT and others, I'm just using ChatGPT as a form of AI because it's probably the most popular right now, but of course there are many others. It's about top, like top five right now just for um, like 
artificial intelligence, not generating computer graphics or videos, or I'm not talking about that, or writing your paper for school. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like actual prompts, getting questions, answers, et cetera. So I think we just want to be careful for now, at least the data that it's trained on is not as great uh, to be all encompassing and to allow you to feel like, oh, you've got everything covered. It's not that at all. All right, the fourth one is this, the fourth negative, fourth negative. This is not, so this is not working yet and will not work yet for natural health. So here's the issue. Conventional medicine is fairly standardized. So when you come in with high blood pressure, there are a handful of drugs you could be prescribed. There's not 40. When you come in with high cholesterol, you're most likely getting a statin of some type or maybe one or two others. Like there's not 40 other different types of high cholesterol medications. Now, there are many different types of brands, but when we look at what are they, you know, they're different forms of essentially a generic. And so that's kind of what we're looking at. I mean, really, like honestly, that's the thing. There are many different types of ibuprofen, right, and painkillers, but really you're pulling them from a a specific uh, Cox, you know, enzyme blocker that you're using in order to improve, you know, pain inflammation. So what I want to say is this, there is not that for natural health, right? There can be, and there will be in the future, but we don't have, oh, you come in with this lab, so you automatically get this supplement, because it's not that. That's not what natural health is. Natural health is diet, exercise, stress reduction, toxin removal, rest, emotional balance, scientifically backed supplements, and then mindset, right? Because psychology plays in such a big role. That's the de-stress protocol that I wrote about in the rain barrel effect, right? That's what it is. So that has not been standardized based on every different case. So myself and my colleagues, though, not just my practice, are working on this right now. Won't be ready for years, but we're working on it, and it will be out there. And we'll create systems that other practitioners can also use freely if they'd like to, because this should be open sourced, So they can start to see all of these different things. Because, again, it's not a pharmaceutical. It's also lifestyle that plays into it. What if a person has high blood pressure and they're basically doing everything right, but they're not sleeping? Well, we need to work on sleep, right? Like, that's one of the missing things. So you can't just recommend a low-salt diet, right? That's not going to do it for high blood pressure. Lots of people are on low-salt diets. That doesn't affect their high blood pressure. It looks like about 25% of the population is actually affected by sodium, where they may get a um, diet-induced response from higher levels of sodium in the diet. But for the most part, most people don't. So again, we're working on that, but it does not work right now for natural health, mainly just for conventional medicine. All right, the last one, the fifth one is this. AI will potentially be commercialized, especially by pharmaceutical companies that make billions and hundreds of billions of dollars that would then be able to invest in these companies. Maybe you saw Microsoft did. You might know who owns Microsoft. Again, it's just something to be aware of. And that it may then influence the decisions by the AI and the recommendations. I hope that that is never the case but it most likely will be. We know how it goes. We're, again, pick your favorite social media platform, pick your favorite news station. I don't have a favorite one, just to share you with that. Um, but you understand that they're influenced based on who's paying the bills. And so I just want to share that, and it's something to, to, um, to think about. So I see it this way. Lots of potential upside with artificial intelligence, but also at least for right now, some downside. The downside could grow in the future if we do not take this seriously and carefully, but it's my belief that within the next three years, we're gonna be able to take advantage of amazing breakthroughs that happen solely because of artificial intelligence. Hopefully today's show was helpful. All of the links will be at stephencabral.com forward slash 2650. That's all the takeaways, the show notes, and much more. Have an amazing day and feel free to share the show with anyone you believe it could serve. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.